Hello my dear YouTuber friends and I hope you're all keeping well. Welcome to this new video which is part 5 of our Back to Basics series. In this video we're going to be taking what we learned in the other videos and bringing it over to a payware aircraft. Learning how to trim the aircraft to get it in straight and level flight. So I'm just trimming down there to trim it. Learning about the different instrumentation where they are on the aircraft, getting familiar with them. Learning about the autopilot on a payware aircraft, where that is and how it behaves differently to something like a Cessna 172 or the default aircrafts. So let's not hesitate. Let's get on with this video. Okay, so amongst the first things you should be doing, I don't always follow this advice myself. When I buy an aircraft, I load it straight into a flight simulator, even take it up for a fly and sometimes crash and burn because I've not read the manual. At some point, at the beginning, go and look at the manual. This has things like introduction specifications of the aircraft and performance, which I'll come to later. You're probably saying, whoa, Hoddison, whoa, I'm on Xbox. How do I go and look at a manual? Well, head over to your favourite search engine. I've got Google here. Do it on an old PC or laptop or your mobile phone, tablet or on your Xbox itself. In there, because we're looking at the Trinidad, I can type in MSFS uh, Trinidad Manual. Oh, let's try that again. Manual. There you go. Press enter. And I'll just see... On this search uh, results here, anything that says a downloadable manual is available below. That's handy on the first link, Lionheart Simulations homepage, in fact. If I click there, let it load in properly. Come on. Yep. There we go. And scroll down so that I can see where I can download a manual. Keep scrolling down. Lovely homepage, that, by the way. And then, here, download the Pilot's Only Manual free here. So if I click that, this will pop open in a new tab. And there's a manual. Works on other aircraft. Pretty much any aircraft that you can buy on Flight Simulator that has a manual. Keep that in mind. That's got a manual available. You can typically type it into a search engine and download it for free, whether you own the aircraft or not. So that's quite useful. Now, within this manual, I've got another tab open. It's the flight operations part that I'm interested in learning. And this is the part that I'd recommend that you read at least, if anything, read the operations. Perhaps how to start the aircraft up, if that's what you're interested in doing. And then take off. These are the parts I want to look at. Standard airspeeds, rotation. So when you rotate the aircraft, an initial climb, 68 knots and 75 knots. When safely airborne, retract the landing gear, which is pretty standard. At 300 feet or above, really, that should be, retract the flaps. So these are the parts I'm interested in. And then the next part I'll be interested in is actually coming down to the descent, the landing. So flaps. Now, I, with the Trinidad, I know there's two stage of flaps. So when it says flaps take off, that's flaps stage one essentially and flaps landing is flaps stage two essentially so flaps takeoffs flaps stage one below 129 knots knots it's safe to engage flaps one when you've done that put your landing gear down and things like mixture and propeller full rich full forward that's fine short final below 103 knots flaps stage two and then you want to keep your airspeed at 73 knots or below for landing. So those are the things I'm looking for when I read a manual. And I fully advise if you buy an aircraft and a manual is available, go and look at these things first. Okay, let's now jump into the simulator and go and fly this thing. 
Okay, so before we jump into the flight and aircraft itself, I just want to go over a couple of things that new players may, fi ben may find beneficial. I've got a simple flight route set up from Gatwick Airport over to London City Airport with Heathrow as a waypoint. When you've bought and downloaded your payware aircraft, I've got a Cessna 172 chosen here, for example. You've got to go and find it by clicking the aircraft symbol and then scroll up and down until you find your aircraft that you've just downloaded. In this case, it's a Trinidad. So I can click there. And what other, what other, another thing that people may not be aware of is that a lot of payware aircraft come supplied and bundled with liveries. So you can click in the liveries there. It may be obvious to a lot of you, but for some people it may not be. And then you can choose a livery. I like this livery, actually. Let's go down and see what liveries are available. I like this one here, in fact. So let's choose this. Close that. And you've got that all set up. You can choose your flight conditions. I've got live weather on. And then you can go and fly. So here we are, set up at runway 26 left at Gatwick Airport in the external view. Be aware when you load into a, a payware aircraft, and many aircraft in fact, they come often in flaps 1 default position. So you've, you've got flaps 1 as your default position. It's quite useful for the Trinidad, that's what the manual uh, recommends anyway. So let's go internal. Now the first thing I do after reading the manual is familiarize myself with the cockpit layout and instrument layout. As you can see these are analog, so dials rather than digital, which is quite nice to see. Let's go down to these dials. So I want to see where my airspeed indicator is, which is here. My artificial horizon here, so when you're banking and pitching up it shows you where you are relative. To your, to your aircraft position there. You've got your altitude indicator. Big hand in hundreds of feet, so 200 feet above sea level at the moment, Gatwick Airport. And then little hand, thousands of feet. So if that goes to one, that means we're at 1,000 feet, etc, etc. Your vertical speed uh, indicator as well, or dial as well. So how much vertical speed we have employed, if we're climbing slightly or descending slightly, so we can trim out uh, taking note of this. And your compass here, we'll come back to this, because actually with the autopilot we use this knob, in the Trinidad at least, to adjust our heading, which is quite interesting. Coming across here, simple autopilot uh, panel, which I'll show you in use as well. And quite annoyingly enough, our RPM dial is over here. So if you're in your default view, can be difficult to see how much RPM you've got engaged from that view, unless you come down. But it's not too much of a nuisance. That's just the way the Trinidad is. So taking note of that, what I'll do, I'll simply set a altitude. This is your uh, altitude uh, dial for the autopilot, so you selected altitude for what you want your autopilot to climb to. I'll dial that in at 2000 feet. I may have to come back to that. It behaves differently to something like the Cessna 172 and whichever aircraft you download and pay for and try, the autopilot panel may be different on that. I'm just showing you this one as an example. Enough talking, let's throttle up, release the parking brake, and you'll see this will get to speed. Look how quickly <laughs> this gets to speed. Lovely aircraft, so it's getting to take off speed, rotation speed already. Pull up gently on our yoke. Positive rate of climb, gear up. There we go, and the manual said after 300 feet, we can raise our flaps. Let's just get that into some kind of trimming position. So I can raise my flaps now, there we go, and trim up. So the first thing I do when trying out a new aircraft is see how the trim feels with it and start trimming the aircraft. Let's pull back our throttle a little bit because we're already going at towards 160 knots. So I'm using the trim wheel on the velocity one in this case. Yes, it's lovely. I'll stop saying that because people get quite frustrated with me saying how lovely the trim wheel it is, but it is. And I'm just trimming 
to try and get that hand to the zero so I'm neither climbing nor descending. So this is what I recommend you do. Get used to the trimming of the aircraft. See how that feels. There we are. We're at pretty much straight on level flight there. And let's now try. Let's just trim down a little bit more there. Let's now try our autopilot. So I click on autopilot. And it's asking us here to put some vertical speed in if you want to climb to that 2000. So using the vertical speed nose up. I'll climb at 300 feet per minute and as you can see our altitude is increasing and it's climbing us to our 2000 feet which we set up before. So I'll just click that vertical speed nose up. It won't change it but we're climbing at 300 feet per minute. Let me just click that again to 400 feet so you can see it behaves slightly differently to something like the Cessna 172. And in fact, on that note, if I click on heading mode, now the heading mode, by default, it's on north, 360 or zero degrees. If I click on that, the aircraft's going to turn to the right here. So let's click on heading mode. because That's where our heading bug is currently. And there you go. And to change the heading in the Trinidad, it may be different depending on what aircraft you bought. But I can move this knob, mouse down on this knob, because I want to come back. Actually, I want to go in an easterly direction to get back towards our flight plan. So let's change that. Let's actually mount. Oh, didn't mean to do that. Let's actually, I've just altered something else there. It shouldn't matter. Let's change that. Let's get back into a view where you can see the heading bug there. It's a little bit difficult to see in this aircraft, in fact just about see it but I'm going to change our heading mug back towards an easterly direction and the aircraft is responding I'll show you that in a moment uh, I'll put it around there you can see it's turning now back towards our flight plan here so you can see how the heading bug works differently the heading mode in autopilot and in vertical speed how that works slightly different like I say from something like the Cessna 172 as we're coming back towards the uh, flight plan once we get over towards this magenta line I'll click on nav and you'll see that behaves as it should in fact we're getting close to it now because this is a very quick aircraft click on nav button you can see nav mode is engaged there now and it's now following our flight route isn't that lovely? As you would expect, it's just like I said, the point I'm trying to make here is that it's slightly different, obviously, to something like the Cessna 172. Let me just decrease my throttle a bit more there. I've got live weather on, and it's quite ooh, lovely and cloudy at the moment. Lovely cloud formation. I have noticed on that point while we're outside that the clouds do look better since the last update. Apparently they have improved the way the clouds look and clouds textures. Lovely. Okay, so let's... So it's, we're coming back, we kind of overshot our flight plan there, but nav mode is engaged, so it will put us back onto our flight plan. Reconfigure the aircraft to put us back on our flight route. And remember, our first stop is Gatwick Airport. So yeah, that's what I do. I get used to the trim first, get used to the way the aircraft feels, get used to the autopilot if your payware aircraft has autopilot functionality, get used to the sort of, is this the G500? I'm not sure, but it's not a G1000, and it's certainly not the NXI mod. Unfortunately, in this module, things like procedures, you can click on it, but you can't alter anything there. It doesn't seem to be patched in at the moment. And VNAV doesn't seem to be patched in either. Nothing seems to work there. Your flight plan shows. Message box shows. OBS doesn't work unfortunately either. And CDI button work. I won't do that because we're in GPS mode at the moment. So it really depends on what aircraft you buy and download. They keep updating this Trinidad. So I'm hoping these features will be available soon in it. But certainly the map panning works. So we can pan out to see how 
far and it tells us the distance to our next waypoint in fact here 15.4 miles at the moment so zoom out and then from there it will tell us the distance to London City Airport so different I quite like that different but still functional in many aspects I want to bring my uh, altitude down there to 1500 feet so I'm gonna click according to the manual we need to click the alt button and then select how much feet per per minute we want to descend at so 300 feet per minute to 1500 feet altitude which it's doing now as you can see it's slowly descending us so that all works fine now we're just over 13 nautical miles I've kept the airport uh, points of interest on I've turned the landmarks off just so you can see here visually how far we have to go and of course the next point of testing out our payware aircraft is configuring ourselves on a final to London City Airport and then seeing how that performs I'll tell you what I'll bring you back in a moment when we get closer to Heathrow okay I've come back and I've got to keep this in the video the flight plan's gone slightly skew whiffy here as you can see the flight plans changed completely to what we set it up could simply be a bug in the system here but I'm gonna look around to see where if I can see through this fit cloud London City Airport is just to our left here so what I'm gonna do it's good to keep this in because then we can practice controlling this aircraft somewhat I'm gonna take it off autopilot and manually fly us doesn't look ideal weather does it but good practice I'm gonna manually steer us towards London City Airport I'm going to do a control turn here. They're feeding a little bit of rudder there. Make sure we don't descend too much here. Let's just control that. So it's really, once again, getting the feel off the aircraft. I've actually turned a little bit too much there. So I'm going to have to trim that down, compensate for the climb there. Come back to our left. It's all good practice here. I could have uh, restarted this video because it went slightly skew whiffy. I'm not sure what went on there. Didn't do that to me last time. Never mind. But I'm going to keep this in just to show you I can still make this. And it's good practice because now I have to take up of a manual control of the aircraft. And I'm going to bring that throttle back. I want to get it, according to the manual, below that 120 mark. Now whilst I'm doing that, I'm going to start trimming it up as well. And that will help us to reduce our throttle. Or speed rather. Now, yeah, so the airport's just ahead over here. Thankfully, I know this area quite well, of course, as I fly quite often in and out of London City Airport. Whoa, that wind. Well, this is good practice for trimming, at least. You can see I'm trimming there. There we go, get that trim under control, get our speed under control a little bit slower, bring back the throttle. I feel our altitude is okay at the moment. Flying past the shard there and other famous landmarks. Oops, let's get back inside. Don't want to do that at this point. Bring it down, we're getting to that 120 now. That's okay, according to the manual for flaps one. And this wind is really buffeting, so this is great practice. Oh, whoa, 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 whoa. <laughs> what was I saying there? Great practice. 
We've had a storm over the southeast of England over the past day. And because I've got it on live weather, you can see the winds are buffeting about us about all over the place. Let's control that. We can actually bring the landing gear down as well now. Again, following the procedures from the manual. Don't take it back up, Hudson. Trim that aircraft back up. Don't want to go much lower now. I've come slightly left of the runway there, as you can see. And I've got to keep in mind this is not a normal approach into London City Airport. You'll come into an approach from the other end because of the buildings here in the way. That's okay, I can compensate for that. Oh, that wind. That is not me, that's a wind, chaps, before anybody comments saying, Oh, you aircraft, you're moving it all over the place. No, the wind's doing that. <laughs> whoa, 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 whoa. I've gone to flaps too there. You can see our speed's around 70 knots, which is ideal according to the manual again. As a final approach to the runway. Wind's settled down now. We've got a bit lower, thankfully. Famous last words. That should do. So that was great practice indeed. So if that ever happens to you, it's a good way of actually getting to know that aircraft a little bit better, especially in weather conditions like this. Still having no real issues getting it lined up for the runway though. Oh yep, the wind's back there. Okay, now let's use my throttle to control my descent. Maybe a little bit more in there till we've made the runway. And then bring it back. That'll be fine. And I'm gonna float the aircraft now. Even on landing, aircrafts can feel very differently to something like the Cessna. You see that wants to go straight towards that runway there. I'm gonna float it up to bring back some of that. Oh. Oh dear, did I just bounce? I did bounce, didn't I? Well, there you go. Anyway, we're down safely. As you can see, when you engage the brakes on this aircraft, you need a little bit more practice with it in landing. When you engage the brakes, it wants to stop on a sixpence. And there you go. Okay, so that's bringing what we've learnt in the other lessons, in the other parts of this video, to a payware aircraft. It's going to be different, obviously, depending on which aircraft you buy and fly, but you can practice a lot of things like trim, flying straight on level, landing, maybe a little bit better than, than I did there, but I'll keep it in. Anyway, let me know the thoughts, your thoughts on this video. If you've enjoyed it, give it a thumbs up, subscribe for more, many more Flight Simulator videos on their way, and I'll see you soon.